In the 60s, some people used mushrooms for the hallucinogenic effects. Well, now those same so-called magic mushrooms are being used to ease the pain and anxiety of cancer patients. In Health Watch today, KCAL 9's Stephanie Abrams takes a closer look at mushroom medicine. And she always had that smile, a beautiful smile of hers. Norbert Litzinger looks lovingly at pictures of his late wife, Pamela Sakuda. They met when he was just 15 years old. Kodinsky. That was a favorite of Pam's and mine. He revisits their times together at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, remembering her joy for life and when her stage 4 cancer diagnosis took it away. She had been on uh, conventional antidepressants, which were absolutely useless. And when you strip a person of hope, there's only a shell left. That's when she volunteered to be part of a study, researching the effects of psychedelic drugs on terminally ill patients. In the 60s, the band named the Magic Mushrooms sang about what they called tripping. A far cry from what happened in lab rooms at the Los Angeles Biomedical Research Institute. This is where Dr. Charles Grobe got government approval to break a more than 40-year hiatus studying the active ingredient in those mushrooms called psilocybin. We essentially corroborated many of the findings of the old researchers from the 1960s that this treatment when optimally controlled can facilitate a, a, a reduction in anxiety, improvement of mood, and overall improvement of quality of life. He gave 12 terminally ill cancer patients just one dose of the drug, a six-hour mind-bending experience that Dr. Grobe says allowed them to release their anxiety about dying. Norbert was allowed to walk in three hours into Pam's treatment. For the first time she had this incredible beaming light that was just coming from her and she was happy. I hadn't seen Pammy happy like that since really the diagnosis and for the first time it looked like the entire weight of the world had been lifted from her shoulders. There was a tremendous feeling of relief and of, of very of, of happiness and of, of hope. Before she passed Pamela shared her transformation with a Hefter Research Institute which promotes research of psychedelics. I don't think the drug is, is the cause of these things. I think it's a catalyst that allows you to release your own thoughts and feelings from some place that you've, you've bound them very tightly. Dr. Grove says patients like Pam didn't have what's commonly known as a trip. With his low controlled dose, they didn't hallucinate, seeing the world around them change. Instead, they had visions with their eyes closed, changing their perception of their own lives. Individuals who have a, an optimal, ideal experience will, will report they come out of it feeling much less anxiety about the inevitability of their passing on. At this point, I'm willing to try anything. Lynn Eklund is dying from ocular melanoma that spread to her liver and her lungs. It's just pretty high anxiety sometimes if I let it get to me. She keeps pushing on with everyday duties in her Silver Lake home, but like Dr. Grobe's patients, she's very afraid of what's next. I think it would help my mental state at this time if I did have something like that, you know, to help me, re I think it would help me relax. A gift to her and her partner who suffered watching her suffer. She's hoping research on psilocybin will continue so that in the future people like her might be able to smile again, like Pam did up until her very last moments captured in this picture. She died on our living room sofa in my arms exactly the way we had intended it with our cat Sally. The study on the use of these magic mushrooms appears in today's issue of the Archives of General Psychiatry.